Hello, hello you guys. I am finally back with another video. I am actually so excited about this video because I am going to be trying something a little bit different today. A few months ago, I got this textbook talking all about the chemical and physical behavior of human hair. And I got this book mainly because I want to nerd out. I do have a hair care channel after all, so it really only makes sense that I would want to understand hair from the inside out. But as I go through this book, I thought it would be really fun to bring you guys along for the ride and share what I learn as I go. Uh, as you can see, I have gone through just a little bit of this book so far. I don't know if you guys can see the bookmarks but it has been so fascinating. I am learning so much and it has definitely changing the way that I approach my hair care routine. And I wanted to share this wealth of knowledge with you guys because um, there is a lot of information out there and it is sometimes hard to figure out what's legitimate and what's not. But I think that this book can serve as a very comprehensive and reliable source of information that can help us all get a better understanding of how hair actually works. And I hope that in the long run, these videos can help us all develop, develop better hair care routines that actually work, fix mistakes that we don't know we're making, so that we can all be left with that glorious, shiny, luscious hair of our dreams. So for this first video, I am going to be talking all about split ends, and this is going to be laid out into three different parts. In the first section, we will talk about how split ends actually happen. Next, we will go into what makes hair susceptible to them. And then at the end of the video, I am going to bring all of this information together and basically determine the best plans of action that you and I can do to prevent them. So if you are ready, let's get into it. So to begin, we need to briefly talk about breakage in general. And the first question that we need to answer is how does breakage actually happen? And contrary to what many of us may think, breakage does not usually happen from pulling on a strand so much that it snaps in half. Hair fibers are actually really strong, and depending on ethnicity, they can hold anywhere from 73 to 100 grams of weight before breaking. On the other hand, the amount of weight required to pull those same strands of hair out of your scalp is about half of that weight, between 30 to 65 grams of weight. So unless if your hair is extremely damaged, you are more likely going to pull it straight out of your scalp well before it breaks. Instead, most breakage actually happens when a strand of hair bends too much and it would snap in half kind of the same way that a branch would. And the severe bending usually happens during the detangling process, when the hairs that are looped around and tangled together are met with some sort of extreme force, such as a comb, the bristles on a brush, or even your hands, applying pressure on those tangles. And as that pressure is building up on those tangles, those looped hairs are continuing to compress and bend way out of proportion, and they will eventually snap in half. Now, when you have a broken hair, it is most likely going to look like one of the four most common types of breakage. There is smooth breakage, which at least to me seems like the ideal type of breakage. There is also step, fibrillation, and the infamous splitting. Now, is there anything that makes you more likely to get one type of breakage over another? Well, smooth breaks are more likely to happen on hair that is closer to your roots, when it is wet, when it has a strong, healthy cuticle, and when the other layers of the hair, especially the cortex layer, which I will get into a little bit later, is healthy as well. Step breaks are more likely to happen on healthy hair that is dried out a little bit. It's not sopping wet anymore, but it's still on the damp side. And fibrillated or split hairs are more likely to occur when the hair has been damaged, especially from oxidative damage, which includes but is not limited to bleach, permanent hair dyes, and sun exposure. Split hairs are also more likely to occur on hair that is twisted or kinky and dry hair as well. So, seems simple enough. Healthy, wet hair is less likely to split than dry, damaged ones, but I wanted to know why that is the case. Why do the moisture levels in your hair matter? And what exactly is happening when the hair actually starts to split? So when it comes to wet versus dry hair, the initial point which the hair first starts to break or crack happens at different layers of the hair when it is wet versus when it's dry. 
when your hair is dry, your cortex is a lot less flexible in comparison to the cuticle, making that layer the weakest point in the hair shaft. And the weakest area in the hair is usually the first thing that gives out when it is under so much stress from any extreme bending. So when this initial crack first occurs in the cortex, a shock wave is sent throughout the length of the hair, down what is called the cortex cortex cell membrane complex. And what this is, is basically a bunch of small keratin fibers and amino acids that essentially glue the cortex cells together. But as the shockwave travels up through this complex, it can be so severe that this actually causes the complex to rip apart, thus resulting in a split end. On the other hand, when your hair is wet, that initial crack is actually more likely to happen just outside of the cortex, usually the junction between the cortex and the cuticle. And this happens because the cortex expands when it is wet and it will start to push up against the cuticle, making the junction between the two layers the weakest point in the hair shaft. And because that initial crack is happening just outside of the cortex, there is no cortex cortex cell membrane complex for any shockwave to travel up through to cause your hair to split. So I hope that makes sense. Now, from what we just learned about how split ends happen in dry hair, uh, which is actually the theory on how they occur in general, I just kind of explained it through the example of dry hair, uh, it becomes apparent that the cortex-cortex cell membrane complex plays a major role in the formation of split ends because split ends are essentially rips that have occurred through this area. Now because of this, we want to make sure that we maintain a healthy complex because when it is healthy and strong, it can withstand pretty much any shockwave that comes its way. And the way that we um, help maintain the health of this area is basically by preventing it from getting damaged in the first place, um, namely through oxidative damage. Now oxidative damage will occur if you expose yourself to a lot of perms, leeches, uh, permanent hair dyes, especially if there are a lot of peroxides um, present in them, heat tools, or a lot of sun exposure even. The heat, the chemicals, and the UV radiation are what weaken this complex, making it unable to properly hold your cortex cells together, making them way more prone to splitting. And unfortunately, there's no way to reverse this damage once it has happened. And furthermore, if your cuticle is damaged, worn down, or you don't even have a cuticle layer anymore, you are going to be much more susceptible to split ends because there is nothing that's going to hold your hair together as this um, shockwave essentially tries to blow up the inside of your strand. So a healthy cuticle is also vital um, in the prevention of split ends. All right, so let's summarize what we have gathered so far. Breakage and split ends usually occur from extreme bending during the detangling process. Split ends are essentially rips that have occurred through the cortex-cortex cell membrane complex. Three, they are more likely to occur when you detangle on dry hair versus wet hair. Oxidative damage through chemical treatments, heat, and UV radiation weaken the complex, making you more likely to form split ends. And finally, a damaged cuticle will also make you more susceptible to split ends as there is nothing to hold your strands together. Now, all of these are pretty straightforward, but I actually want to talk a little bit more about the cuticle and what can cause that to wear down. Um, and it's actually uh, pretty simple. It's basically just daily grooming activities, such as brushing the hair, shampooing it, especially if your product has a high pH, um, if your strands are rubbing up against one another or another rough surface, such as your shirts, um, and also sun exposure can weaken the cuticle as well. So I just wanted to quickly mention those things so you guys have a little bit more clarity with that. But there are actually two more things that can increase your susceptibility to split ends as well. And one of those things is your curl pattern. Generally, the curlier your hair, the more tangles you get, um, which also means that there is more force required to pull a comb or a brush through the hair. Um, so that can greatly influence the amount of split ends that you get as well. And lastly, your haircut also plays a role in split ends. Apparently, if you have a blunt haircut, you can get almost three times as many split ends than if your hair had a tapered haircut. 
and this actually really surprised me. I always thought that a blunt haircut would be um, almost ideal to prevent uh, breakage and uh, split ends because I always thought that those hair strands would kind of protect one another, uh, but apparently that's not how it works. And instead, one of the things that happens with uh, blunt haircuts is that all of your tangles are um, basically concentrated in one small area. So you have to, so you're going to have to really force that comb or brush through your hair to get rid of all of those tangles at once. But whereas if you had a tapered haircut, your uh, tangles are going to be dispersed throughout uh, the length of your hair a little bit more. So you're not going to need to yank it nearly as hard to get through those tangles. All right, so now it is time to talk about how we can actually prevent split ends from happening. So let's bring up our summary sheet from before and add on our two additional susceptibilities. So based on this, we can quickly find a few ways that we can go about preventing split ends, such as avoiding chemicals, excessive heat and sun exposure, opting for a tapered haircut versus a blunt one, making sure that you are gentle during the detangling process since split ends occur during this process, and also being conscious about our grooming activities. Now, I want to break this down a little bit more because it is a little bit vague right now. And the first thing that I want to talk about is how to protect our hair from the sun, because I've honestly never really thought about how damaging the sun can be for our hair, but it is actually one of the most damaging things that our hair can go through, um, especially if you like to sunbathe or if your hair is naturally a lighter color or if you've bleached it. So how do we actually go about protecting our hair from the sun? Uh, one way is hats, especially wide rim hats. They're a really fun way to go. Um, I really prefer this route because they're minimal effort. They're a great way to elevate your style. They keep you cool. They protect your scalp. I just think they're a great option overall. But another thing that can work really well for some people is henna. Henna is actually a fantastic natural sun protectant, and you can actually see it in action with henna tattoos, where you can have a tan line with the same design of the tattoo once it has faded. Um, it's really, really cool. But not only is henna a great sun protectant, it also helps to preserve the moisture in our hair and it protects it from weathering from our daily grooming activities. Um, and this can in turn help with our overall hair health and thus reduce split ends. If you guys want to learn a little bit more about henna, I will link a few videos in the description box talking about how I like to use it, not only to dye my hair, but to also keep it healthy and strong. So if you're interested, make sure to check those out. And I know a lot of people aren't super excited about the red hue that henna can give the hair. And if this is the case for you, you can also try cassia, which is also known as neutral henna. And this provides all of the same benefits that henna does, um, including sun protection, but it doesn't color the hair. Although I will say if you have platinum blonde or gray hair, um, it can turn it a little bit gold. But for those with uh, darker hair colors, like browns to blacks, you won't notice any color. And if you guys want to know where I get my henna and cassia, um, Again, check the description box down below um, and I will link to where I get my powders. Um, I also just realized how dark it is in here, so let me turn on a light. I think there's a little, there's a cloud in the distance, so I'll just compensate for some indoor lighting. That looks good. I like that. Now the last thing that I want to talk about is making sure that your ends are wet and conditioned before you go in with a comb or you start to detangle your hair. And I recommend this especially if you have more wavy to straight hair. And this is because you may have heard that hair is easier to break when it is in the wet state. And this is definitely true if your hair is on the more wavy to straight side. It is a little bit of a different story um, on the curlier side of the spectrum, which I'll get into in a little bit. But if your hair texture is say type two or below, um, it is in fact easier for your hair to break when it is wet. Um, and this gets a little bit confusing because as we were saying throughout this entire video is that split ends are more likely to happen on dry hair. So this is super contradictory. So what do you do? And the way that I think about it is that split ends really only happen at the ends of your hair. So that's really the only area that we're concerned with. So there's really no need for us to get the rest of our hair wet. 
And even though your ends may be weaker when they're in the wet state, if you apply a good conditioner, oil, serum, uh, to make sure that your ends are well lubricated and make sure that your tangles are able to just slip right through, in my mind, that should kind of balance everything out and you shouldn't be increasing your risk of breakage. And any breakage that does occur, it's more likely going to be a smooth or a step fracture, which in my mind is a more ideal type of breakage because it does not um, cause further damage to the hair as a split end would. Now, if your hair is on the curly to kinky side of the spectrum, you do in fact want to make sure that your entire head is wet before detangling. It is well known in the curly community that it is not fun to comb through dry curly hair. There is a lot more force required to pull a comb or a brush through dry, soon to be very frizzy curly hair as opposed to say dry straight hair. Whereas when our hair is wet and our curls are being weighed down by all the water and the conditioner, there is going to be way less friction and thus way less force required to detangle our hair or to pull a comb through it. So this is why if your hair is curly to kinky, you really want to make sure your hair is wet, um, well conditioned, especially focusing on the ends. And through this, you should be able to uh, prevent split ends uh, quite easily as well. And another thing that I've been doing personally is that if I uh, want to change up my hairstyle, um, say I've been wearing it out for a few days and I want to put it up into um, some braids or some sort of updo, is I will take a spray bottle, spray my ends, maybe add a little bit of conditioner um, before I try to manipulate my hair. And that has been very helpful for me as well. All right, there we go. That is everything that I have learned about split ends, how they happen, how to prevent them. Um, I hope all of this made sense. I tried to simplify things as best as I could, but if you do need to rewatch this video a few times, don't feel bad. Um, and if you do have any additional questions, feel free to leave them below and I will make sure to answer them in another video. But yeah, I hope you guys learned something new today and that you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and comment if you did. Um, and if you want to keep up with me a little bit more, make sure to follow me on Instagram at violet.bloom. I know I'm not really the most active on YouTube, but I do appear a little bit more often on Instagram in general. So if you guys want to keep up with me a little bit more, um, make sure to follow me on there. Um, otherwise, I hope you all are having a great day and I will see you in the next one. Bye.